Hi everyone, let's take a look at the following physics kinematics example. A cannon fires a cannonball 500 meters downrange when set at a 45 degree angle. At what velocity does the cannonball leave the cannon? Step one, mindset. You can do it. Step number two, again, instead of using the GRASS structure, I'm going to go straight to the most important section, which is the AS, which means how do you analyze this and what is the actual solution? So I would say the first step is to draw a diagram. And again, I'm going to draw a straight line for you right there. And if you think about the given, a cannonball is going to be shot at 45 degrees. So it's going to look roughly speaking, something like this. The angle theta is 45 degrees. And of course, you can break this into components. So there's the x component right there, we can denote this as v, i, x. And here's the y component, which we can define as v, i, y. Now, again, if I draw this bigger on the corner for you, again, here's the right angle triangle. There's the 45 degrees. This is what we're looking for, V. And this is going to be the vertical component, V, I, Y, which equals to, and I'll zoom out for you, which equals to V sine of 45 degrees. Likewise, if you look at V, I, X, that's going to be V cosine 45 degrees. And again, the keyword here is downrange. And downrange simply means the horizontal displacement. So this measurement is also known as a downrange. So I'm just going to write that down. Downrange. Okay. Now, it's asking you at what angle does the cannonball leave the cannon? So you're looking for V. So what you have to do is start with the kinematic equation, delta D equals to V I times delta T plus half A T square. Now, be mindful here. You can look at this in terms of the X component. You can also look at this in terms of the Y component. And we're going to do both. So first, we're going to start with the Y component just like that. And what that means is the vertical displacement is going to be zero because we're starting here and we're ending in the same level. We're not going up, we're not going down. So the change in the vertical displacement is going to be exactly zero. Next, if you think about VIY, that's going to be V sine 45 degrees times time plus half times Ay means acceleration due to gravity, which is always negative 9.8. Again, you multiply this by t squared. Now, if you look at this carefully, you can isolate for time in terms of v. And what I mean is you can factor time to the front, which means in the second bracket, it's going to be v sine 45 degrees minus 4.9 times t. Now you can dismiss the first case because this will give you time equal to zero, which is not what we're looking for here. And if you look at the second case, uh, V sine 45 degrees minus 4.9 T equals to zero. So if you bring negative 4.9 T to the right, that's going to be equal to positive 4.9 T. And of course, if you isolate for T, that's going to be V sine 45 degrees divided by 4.9. And I'm going to put a box around this. We're going to come back to this in a moment. Now, we can use the same setup, delta D, which equals to VI times T plus half AT squared again. The difference now is looking at the horizontal component. So this is going to be X. And of course, the value for AX, the acceleration um, horizontally speaking, is always going to be zero. So now we go back again, think about the downrange. In the given, that's going to be 500 meters. Again, 500 meter downrange, which is what we talked about from the diagram. 
So you go back and you can write down 500 equals to VIX. And again, VIX is the initial velocity, uh, the horizontal component, which is V cosine 45 degrees times time. All we have to do now is plug in time, which now means you can express this in terms of V, exactly what we're looking for. So if you go back, this is going to be 500, which equals to V times cosine of 45 degrees. If you think about time, that's going to be V sine 45 degrees divided by 4.9. The difficult part is now over. Let's zoom in for you. Again, you can do this men, uh, mentally. I mean, you could, you could use a calculator. I'm not going to stop you from doing that. But if you use a little bit of mental math, look at this. V times V is going to be V squared. Now, cosine of 45 degrees, by the way, is exactly 1 over root 2. And sine of 45 degrees is also exactly 1 over root 2. And I'll just leave it as 1 divided by 4.9 like that. Now, root 2 times root 2 is going to be 2. And if you cross multiply, 2 times 500 is exactly 1,000. And of course, you can also take 4.9 and bring it to the other side. So 4.9 times 1,000 is going to be 49,000, which equals to V squared. The opposite of taking the, uh, or the opposite of squaring both sides is to find a square root. Now, ideally, there are two cases, plus and minus, but in this context, only the, um, only the uh, positive case is meaningful. And the square root of, and again, I'm thinking about my mental math here. This should not be 49,000. That was my mistake. It should be 4,900. Uh, the square root of that is exactly 70 meters per second. And if I go back and I look at the answer key, it's exactly 70 meters per second. And it is asking what velocity does the cannonball leave the cannon. So if you want to be a bit more clear in terms of the vector, it's going to be 70 meters per second. And again, in terms of direction, just like the answer key, it's going to be at 45 degrees. So I'll leave it as 45 degrees um, just to match the answer. I'll just write down at 45 degrees, just like that. If you find this physics video is adding value to your physics course, please comment, like, share, and subscribe. I hope this makes sense.